All right, to properly torque a bolt, you have to know both the diameter and the thread pitch. So we have to talk about thread pitch. The thread pitch is how many threads per inch. So thread pitch is another way of saying threads per inch. And the way you measure that is with this tool that looks uh, I always think I brought in one, but it looks like that. It has a, a whole bunch of these um, blades on it that look like little tiny combs. I got to get a picture of one, huh? Uh, when I, I actually worked, worked at Ace Harbor, I kept one of those all the time. For okay, cool. So you know this. Now, these tools may have what, 20, 30 little blades on it. And it's actually very difficult to get them all out. And this one, okay, that one kind of fits. And this one sort of, and it's easy to make a mistake. But I have a trick that will make it very easy for you next, using that chart. So let's go back to here, talk about that. So thread pitch. Thread pitch. Also known as... TPI, which is threads per inch. Threads per inch. What is metric? Still TPI. Uh, metric is. Still yeah, which is funny. You'd think it'd be threads per centimeter, centimeter or something like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, standard aircraft hardware. is fine pitch. Maybe I said that too soon. So that's just to say that thread pitch comes in. So thread pitch comes in. Comes in both fine thread which is known as NF. There's actually more to this, but we're just going to keep it simple. Both fine thread and coarse thread, which would be NC, national coarse. So you can have fine thread, you can have coarse thread. The two don't mix. If you try and force a fine thread onto a coarse thread bolt, it will ruin something. If you do it the other way around, it will ruin something. I guess while we're on this subject, side note, we have NF, which is what? Fine thread. Fine thread, which is most aircraft hardware. We have NC, which is coarse thread, which there's coarse thread out there. Uh, Lycoming engines use coarse thread almost exclusively on their, their hardware. Then we have pipe. Pipe thread is not the same as any of those things. Mm -hmm. And then we have, I don't know what I call it, um, it's hose fitting or, um, I'll just call it that. Hose. <coughs> hose fittings, just to keep it simple. Those are four distinct things. And if you want to see me come unglued a little bit, try shoving a hose fitting on a pipe. And the reason why I come unglued on that is because that's how people die uh, often in this industry, is people don't understand threads. They force things together. It sort of sticks and like, look at me, I'm a genius. And then somebody dies. So we don't want to do that. All right, so thread pitch. Uh, let's see, thread pitch can be measured with measured with a thread pitch gauge. Let me see here. There we go. Just gotta get a nice picture of one. Steal it right here. What's a good one? This one? 
steal it from Amazon. Metric. Yeah, I think that's standard. All right. Hmm. See, the other one might have worked. Oh, it's a standard. Okay. So there we go. Thread pitch gauge. So imagine you will, I hand you a bolt and I say, what thread pitch is that? And you say, come back in a little while because I've got a lot of things to go through. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, probably in there. So, oh, not soon. 26. So we're at uh, 52 possibilities. How long is it going to take you? And it's, by the way, anything that doubles is going to be even worse because one will fit, but it'll skip every other tooth. And be like, oh, that fits. So there's a cheater way to do it, and that is using this chart. This is a torque chart out of AC4313. So is that approved data? Yes. Try again. Is that approved data? It's acceptable. it's acceptable. So it's not approved. It's acceptable. And when is it acceptable? When there's nothing else. So this is your go-to chart. You're already screwing up on an airplane. But anyway. This represents, if nothing else, all of the bolts that are available to us in aviation. So if I handed you a bolt and I said, how many threads per inch is on this bolt? The very first thing I would do is measure the diameter. And if I measured the diameter and I said, wow, it measures out at um, a quarter inch, then all I have to do is look at this chart and go, well, here's a quarter inch fine bolt and a quarter inch coarse bolt and looking at that looking at that there we go enlarge it that is a quarter inch 28 threads per inch and if I look down here that is a quarter inch 20 threads per inch so that is to say that in aviation if you have a quarter inch bolt it can only have one of two possibilities either 28 threads per inch or 20 threads per inch. Have I lost anybody? So now how long will it take you to figure out with the threads on that one? You only have to try two of them. One's going to fit, one's not. So, so simple. Yes? What's, why, what's the advantage of course, fine thread versus core? What's the difference? Why, what, what, not, not what's the difference of the two. What's the Advantage, disadvantage, Advantage, it goes down into an engineering aspect of it okay. about how much torque you get and, and which I don't even know the answer. Yes? So when you're using those two to measure, are you using both of them and you're trying to figure out if one is coarse thread and one is fine thread? Yes. Okay. So yep. if you knew you just used the one, if you knew it was fine thread, then... You'll, you'll know. I mean, you, you can pick up two bolts and go, wow, this one's got less threads than this one. And, and pretty soon you'll know. You can just pick up any bolt and you'll go, that's eh, a fine thread quarter inch. It's just, you just know. But until you know, that's the way you do it. You figure, you measure the diameter. And what tool would I use to measure the diameter? Calipers. I would use calipers. I would not use a micrometer. It's like way too, it's just caliper and it's just going to get close. And then I'll show you how to do that from there. And then you're going to go, oh, very simple. Measure it, calipers and figure it out. So what if you measure with your calipers and you got three eighths? Then what are your two choices? Three eighths, 24, or 16. It's either gonna be a three eighths, 24, right there, 24, or three eighths, 16, 16. So that tool that we had right here, I would get out. I would 
to get out the 24 and the 16. So here's the 24 is probably in the 22, 24 right there, and the 16, uh, I don't know where it is, but it doesn't matter, right about there. Get those two out, one's going to fit, one's not. Now you're done. All right. So let's see here. So this chart is again out of AC 4313, so it is acceptable. It's the last thing we are going to look at. And I'll talk more about this in a little bit, but I'm going to say it again. I'll say it again later. This is not the go-to chart. It's kind of the last, last resort chart but we are going to use that. So it does say, caution, the following torque values are derived from oil-free cadmium plated threads. So what treatment is on the threads? Yeah. And it's yeah. oil-free. We'll get into that later. That's a big deal. All right. Oh, I want to go here and make sure I keep it on. Okay. All right, thread pitch measure with thread pitch gauge. All right. Four. It is critical. Critical in all big letters. To note. <coughs> to note that the head size, head size wrench size or the wrench size is not the bolt size. My daughter made me a coffee cup for Christmas. It says the wrench size is not the bolt size because I have to say it all of the time. <laughs> Why is that so critical? All right, let's just say using our chart right here, I have a quarter inch bolt, fine thread. Let's look at how this chart works. It is divided up into many columns. I wish they would have done it a little bit different, but they didn't, so this is the way life treats us. So here we go. Up at the top, it says the following are derived from oil-free CAD-plated threads, torque limit recommendations, installation bolts loaded primarily in shear. Okay, we're going to look at this column right here. There is tension and shear nuts. Tension and shear. Tension means you have two plates that are trying to be pulled apart this way. Shear means they're trying to go that way. So if you have something that is in a tension load, trying to be pulled apart, they will use a bolt and a large nut, standard nut, if you will, because it's trying to go that way. But to save weight, if it's just a part that's going, it's trying to shear, then they'll use a bolt with a very small nut, with a very light torque. All you're doing is holding the bolt in place because the load is this way. So you don't need the big nuts, you save a little bit, save an ounce. So every little ounce counts. So you have to look at this. Are we using a tension nut or a shear nut? They're different. A shear nut is half the size. It only has a couple threads. The tension nut is much taller. Follow? So we look at this and we say, okay, I have a quarter inch bolt. And oh, by the way, so you have one column here. It's tension recommended. So this is the recommended. Then we skip over here and this is the maximum tension and this is a recommended shear, then over here is the maximum shear. So for a quarter inch bolt under a tension load, what is the torque? 50 to 70 inch pounds. And the maximum is 100. Well, I always torque to maximum allowable, so we'll make this easy. So a quarter inch bolt should be torqued to a maximum of 100 inch pounds. But you never have taken my class and have no idea that the wrench size is not the bolt size. It just so happens that the wrench that fits a quarter inch bolt happens to be, does anybody know? 7 16ths. 
So you say, oh, I have a 7 16 inch wrench, therefore I must have a 7 16 inch bolt, and I always torque to the maximum allowable. You will torque that bolt to 840, well, you won't, but you will try. So a bolt that was supposed to go to a maximum of 100, here we have somebody trying to do it to over eight times the max. Well, what's it gonna do? It will get tight and then it will get very loose. Thus the joke, what is the maximum tightness any bolt can take? And that is tighten it till it gets loose and back it off a quarter turn. <laughs> oh, got a little loose, we'll just back it off, it's fine now. <laughs> uh, okay, so the wrench size is not the bolt size, that is why. If you do that, you will definitely screw up eight times the torque. So don't do that. So far I've been lucky. My last few classes, nobody, well, I think a few people have done it because they come with a, this does it, it, it's all messed up now. Yeah, I wonder how it's messed up. All right, uh, let's see, wrench size, okay. Uh, yeah, bolts. And then I have the example. All right, so let me see. I shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> it's a joke okay. from a good movie. Has anybody seen My Cousin Vinny? Yeah. All right, well, maybe I'll play it. It's <laughs> You're laughing. You see My Cousin Vinny? Is that the one with um, Mar Marissa Tomei and um, Joe Danny Pesci. Joe, Joe Pesci? Pesci. She's the car I think so, yeah. yeah, she's the car expert. There's a fantastic scene about torque wrenches in there. It's on my have to show list on here, but I haven't shown you my movies. Anyway, she talks about it. Dead ball's accurate, that's where that comes from. And she, anyway, I'll show it to you at break. Um, okay, so let's see. Let me circle back, just make sure we got that. So we got the chart okay. Everybody understands how to use the chart because it's really just that simple. I didn't spend much time on it. What's the smallest A in bolt that we have? Nope. Nope. Smallest diameter. What was it? 3 16 which is also a 10. So right there, there is no 3 16 but there's a 10. How many threads per inch is it? 32. What if it's coarse thread? 24 threads per inch coarse thread. Okay. What size is the one? An 8? Number 8. It's a screw. They don't make it in a bolt that size. So it'd be number 8 screw. So generally, coarse threads are always going to be the smaller amount than pine threads? Is what? Oh, and threads per inch? Absolutely. Okay. That's literally what it means. Less threads per inch, of course. All right, so we got bolts. We know how to safety them. We know how to measure them. We know how to identify them. That's, and that is going to be on the test. You know, hey, what is an AN 4-5? You should know that. AN 4-5A, all that kind of stuff. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about um, nuts. There we go. All right. We have different nuts on here. Let me write this down. Nuts. Nuts. Sizing of nuts. Sizing. Uh, the size of the nut of the nut corresponds to the size of the bolt. So an AN4 is a what? What's the diameter? one quarter inch bolt and it uses a quarter inch nut. There are many different types of nuts. We will look at a, some of them. Let me see. Mm, I don't want to write all this stuff out. It's just going to take forever. I don't need to. All right, so different type of nuts. We'll just go by this. This is a castellated nut. 
So this is in for use with a bolt that has what? Drilled shank. So is that an A or not an A? Not an A. So this would be a standard. So A and like a, this would be an A and three dash six or something. So it uses a castellated nut. So castellated nut. Let me see. So when you're using a castellated nut, you will use a cotter pin. And you will torque it, torque, torque to minimum. Oops, and see if cotter pin, cotter pin fits. If not, go to max. So what I mean by that is you, you have a, say a quarter inch, fine. And so we have 50 to 70 with a maximum of 100. So I'm gonna to torque it to 50. And I'm gonna see if those holes line up. And if it doesn't, I can go all the way up to 100. Don't go to 100, but you can find, just, I'm just barely, I'm just missing a little bit. Just go a little bit, make sure you don't exceed the torque. And if it lines up, boom, go for it. And then it fits. If it doesn't, uh, and then go to max. If it doesn't fit then, if still no fit, change or add a washer or change nut. They're all different uh, the way they're drilled and also. So if that doesn't work, then change it out. Also, cotter pins have specific sizes for specific bolts. It's not, ex see how that cotter pin fills that hole? If it didn't line up very well, it's not acceptable to go find a cotter pin that's barely visible with the naked eye and stick it in there. You can't just go getting a teeny tiny little cotter pin and go put it in there. I had that problem last class at 309. So I, your project, you have to line up these nuts and make sure the cotter pin fits. And I came around, everybody had these teeny tiny little cotter pins that were like, what the hell? Where'd you even get that? I'm like, well, the carter pin fits. Well, you're not wrong. So, all right. Um, I don't know why that's there. Carter pins come in uh, both shear and tension. The only way you can tell the difference between a shear and tension is either A, you have to have the experience working with them, B, pull them out of a marked bag, or C, ask somebody. So when you get down to this project and you don't know if you have a tension or shear, I have a whole bunch of nuts lined up in the classroom and they're labeled like this whole row is tension, this whole row is shear, and you just walk up and look at it, go, that looks like that one, so it's tension or ask. That's the only way you're gonna know. All right, we have self-locking nuts. I don't know why this picture is here. Uh, Self-locking nuts. Self-locking nuts have a nylon insert. That nylon insert is good for... Why did I just lose that number? 200, no, 250, 200... Jeez, come on. Why is that not working today? There we go. 250 degrees Fahrenheit is the max temp. What happens after 250? That nylon insert melts out. Now the way these work is there's no threads in that nylon insert. And so it's called a self-locking nut. And by the way, in aviation, I've noticed that there's green, there's red, and there's yellow. This is me, I noticed it. There is no clear. If you get one that's clear, it probably came from Ace Hardware or Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, okay, so when they're new, this nylon is not threaded. And so when you go to thread the nut on the bolt, you can easily do it with your fingers all the way up until the bolt hits that nylon and then you're not moving it after that. You have to have a wrench to put it on. And what happens is you, you bolt it on and that grips the bolt and keeps it from what working itself off. Um, get into this. Yeah, we'll talk about it. 
these come in both tension and shear. The tall ones are tension and the short ones are shear. Let's see. Are those one-time uses? Uh, okay, I see. I get into that later. Um, yes and no. That is a very complicated answer. I was going to ask the same question. Well, I was going to write it down. All right, so plain nuts. Let me see. All right. So nuts. We'll do castle nuts. Castle. I don't have anything written down about castle nuts. I'm just going to put there's tension and there's shear. I'm going to make sure I spell shear right because sometimes I do it wrong. I'll be like um, S H E E R because S H E A R is a whole other thing and that's just weird. Okay, so there's castle nuts, uh, tension shear, they use a cotter pin. Cotter pin, I told you about the torque. Uh, let's see, we'll talk about, let's see, three. Let's go to plain nuts. Plain nuts, all right, we'll do plain nuts next, just because that's where it goes. Plain nuts, here's plain nuts. So plain nuts come in both tension and shear. See the difference? The, the 316 is, you don't have to remember these numbers, but it's half the size and it takes about half the torque. So I want to be careful with that. So plain nuts, let me see plain nuts. We have the um, tension and shear. And we also have the shear nut. Um, what safety is a plain nut? You got it. Always use a lock washer. A lock washer and a uh, lock washer and plane washer. With a plain nut. There are exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, they are not. Um, lock washers. They come in both a split lock and a star lock. There's our split lock down here in the bottom and a star lock. A split lock is reusable provided it, see how that's not sitting flat? If it doesn't sit flat and the splits are kind of offset, it's considered reusable. Star locks are never reusable. There's both internal and external teeth because they're very thin stamped metal. And so when you smash it on there, those little teeth grip in and they flatten out. And when you take off whatever you're doing, you'll see that it's, it's all flattened and it doesn't work anymore. So, um, so split lock is reusable. And a star lock is not reusable. Reusable if, I don't know, if what? If it's still, it's not flat. It's if, not flat. yeah, not flat. Very good, thank you. Um, there was two different types of star uh, washers. Yep. What is aesthetics? Yeah. Um, I have noticed that the internal lock is the very common one and the external lock is only for screws, small screws for some reason. That's just all I've noticed. I, I, I can't really speak to why that is. Do they come in both? You can order either one. Um, all right, so those are the plain nuts. Let me see. Self-locking nuts. Um, not to be used, not to be used where a loose nut or bolt, where a loose nut, bolt, washer could get ingested into the engine. So in other words, they don't have a lot of faith in these things. They could come loose. 
And if it comes loose, you don't want to get sucked up in the engine and ruining an engine. So they're not to be used there. Not to be used on parts subject to rotation. Not to be used on parts subject to rotation. Okay, by what I mean by that, what they mean by that, is like on all these little airplanes, the wheels are bolted together and they have self-locking nuts. And of course the wheel goes around. That is not what I mean by subject to rotation. Or maybe you bolt the prop on and that's subject to rotation. What they mean by subject to rotation would be something like this picture right here. This is an arm off a control surface with a cable. And so that's gonna constantly be going like that. See what I'm doing there? So these two pieces have, they rotate between each other. So this, this thing is loose on there really. And so you cannot use a self-locking nut here because these two things have relative motion against each other. So anything that moves or subject to rotation like that, you cannot use a self-locking nut because in theory it could grab it and work its way off. So cannot, cannot. It is used, but you can't just use it. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I've decided I'm going to use Threadlocker. Uh, it has very specific applications for when we're supposed to use it. And of course, Threadlocker has many different types of Threadlocker, uh, different strengths. And so it's, no, it's just not a standard practice to, you know, well, oh, it's Threadlock everything. No, don't do that. And if you were to use red Threadlocker, the high strength on something, somebody will find you and kill you. So don't do that. All right, so we're talking about self-locking nuts, right? Self-locking nuts, all right. Two rules so far. Can't be used where it's what? Can get ingested or subject to rotation. Okay. And there are a couple different types. One, there is the low temp. The low temp. Um, and that's the one that uses a fiber insert. Uses a fiber, nylon, fiber or nylon. That grabs the bolt. That grabs the bolt from turning. All right, to answer your question, reusable if the nut, if the nut, I'm gonna say meets. I think that my keyboard is not working as my chief complaint here. I keep asking it to do things and it is not. Oh, it actually is. If the nut meets minimum prevailing torque, which is to say application, application torque. There, all right, so what that is saying is that if the nut, and there's a chart that would give you the nut size and how much torque it takes to just freely put it on before it touches. If it uses that minimum torque, meets the minimum torque, it's good. So for example, I changed out uh, a piece of my carburetor uh, last year and in the instructions to change out this piece, it had a nylon insert and it said when you can reuse it as long as it takes more than five inch pounds to screw it in which is to say that you can use this quarter inch bolt if it takes at least 10 inch pounds to, and use a torque wrench and, to put it on. The problem with that is this chart starts with very large nuts and there's no data for the 3 16 quarter inch, 5 16 um, or 3 8 I think. So there's no data. So it says you can reuse it if it meets the minimum driving torque, but we're not gonna tell you what that is. 
So the rule of thumb, which is also to say the norm, so you do this out in the field, just so you know when you get out there, they say and that, not as they, that if you can put it on with your fingers, you should throw it away. Well, that's pretty loose. Yeah. yeah that's pretty damn loose. Yeah. So do with that what you want. I don't think you should replace it every single time. If it was a non-critical part and there's a lot of bolts and nuts holding it on, maybe I wouldn't be so concerned if I used the nut once or twice. If it's a very critical part and there's only a couple of them on there, uh, I'm just I'm just gonna buy a new one. So. Only like a dollar or two at most. Or a bag. Yeah, they're they're not they're not that much. So. When you're in the field, you wouldn't you wouldn't reuse a bolt like if you're working at like an airport united. Mm -hmm. They have all those tools like no, yeah. parts ready. You would you would reuse it if it would torque to the yeah. Piece. I did. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, re not reusable. Let's see, we got low temp reusable. Yeah. Okay. Um, you must have. How many threads showing? One. At least one full thread showing of the bolt showing past nylon. Not for use. Um, where temps exceed. How much? 250 degrees because burns off and not for use or bolt to subject rotation. I already said that. Okay, so there's the low temp and then there's the also there's uh, tension and shear. So there you go. The AN365 or the MS2365 size full prowl self locking nylon insert. CAD plated nut, usable up to 250 degrees, tension or shear loads. This is the tall one, so it's therefore it's tension. tension. And this is the short one, which is shear. shear loads only. All right, then we have the high temp. I'm using finger quotes because high temp is up to 450 degrees. That's not very high temp. So, all right, so let me see. Self locking nuts from that low temp. Is it A, B, C, D, low temp. So um, this we'll call this high temp. High temp, sort of. All right, so this does not use a nylon insert, but uses a pinched end. Pinched end to grip the bolt. So obviously, you don't have to worry about the nylon coming out because there is no nylon. They just took a little hacksaw and by the way, they use little gnomes for this. Um, they used to, then uh, this cookie company was getting all the gnomes going to work for them making cookies, so I had to come up with a machine to do it. Uh, they just uh, hacksaw a little bit right there and then they pinched that in. And so when this goes, the bolt goes through, those, that pinched end really grips the bolt. So there's no nylon insert. But what happens after 450 degrees is this CAD plating starts to bake itself into the base metal and becomes super brittle. So I've seen people use these for exhaust nuts and exhaust systems run about 1500 degrees. And so if they manage to stay on, um, they stay on. But when you put a, nut, a wrench on it to pull them off of a stud that's been on exhaust, they usually just turn almost to dust. They're, they're so brittle that it's breaking a bunch of pieces in your socket. And you're like, wow, well, there you go, just dump it out. So you have to use a true high temp nut on exhaust systems. Um, let's see. They come pre-crimped. Yeah, you don't crimp them. All right, so high temp uses pinched end. Uh, same rules apply, not, not to be used where it's subject to rotation. And how many threads showing? At least one full thread, let's see. For use up to 450 degrees F, okay. And then we have 
Castellated nuts. There we go. The AN 310s and 320s, which I think we've covered already well enough. You have tension and shear. There's the shear. Look at how many threads are in there. Like one and a half. So if you try and put a, ten a tension torque on this, it'll just strip it all out. And you'll come in and go, I don't know what happened. It was like that when I got here. Yeah, it was. All right. So to torque it, the procedure is we use the minimum, minimum torque up to maximum. maximum. And if it doesn't maximum. work, then you have to change out the washer, add a washer, change a nut. There's one thing I want to describe here, and it's not easy to do. You can add a washer to put two washers on there? Mm -hmm. How many can you do maximum? Up to one eighth of an inch. Why do I not have this on here yet? Uh, because it's next class. We cover it hardware in great detail in 306, 307. So, uh, but it's, it's an eighth inch. Eighth inch washers. Okay, there's one mistake that people make just want to make sure that you don't do this thing. And let me see if I can, I should take an art class because God knows I can't draw. All right, so sometimes we have things that, you know, like a piece of something. Yeah, there's a hole through the middle of it. And we have to bolt it to this other thing. That has a hole in it. And what we use is a stud. And the stud is basically a bolt with threads through the whole thing and no head. And so you drive this stud into this part. So there's a stud that's screwed into this and sticks up through here. And then has threads right here and a hole in it. Follow? Mm -hmm. You dig it, man? I was going to say. Okay. And so you have this stud on here and it's bolted solid down down here this is it's not coming out it's it's pretty well screwed in there and it's tight and then we put this other part on and what goes on here next Ooh, like you guys washer put a take we'll put a where did that go i didn't like me washer put a washer what goes next a castellated nut I don't know what's going on up there. Whatever, castellated it. So if I put a castellated nut, and that's the point I want to make, if I put a castellated nut on here, yeah, it's not happy. She's going slow. A castellated nut on here, which I probably can't draw a castellated nut, especially with the mouse. Castellated nut. Comes up, we put a castellated nut on here, and we put a cotter pin in there, right? Cut a potter, cotter pin. All right, so we got a cotter pin going in here. I don't know, a cotter pin going around. There we go, cotter pin. What have I just made? I would call it a bolt because all I have to do is put a wrench on this nut and start screwing it and it'll unscrew it from right down here. And I'll pull the whole thing out and go, look, there's a stud and a castle nut and a cotter pin. How cute is that? You can't put a castle nut through a stud. Can you visually see that? I know I may have caused some of you to struggle, but all you made is a bolt and it won't stay. So if you've got a stud with a drilled hole in the shank, which you often do, then you must use safety wire and tie it to keep the stud from coming out. Anyway, just thought I'd mention it. So, Imagine right there. Imagine this picture right here. It's just a stud. So the other end of this is just screwed into something. Could I just put a wrench on here and unscrew the whole thing? Yes, I could. So. Yeah? I was going to get deeper into studs, but if you're talking about going deeper into that. Like, what's your question? When you stick a stud in, is there like a, do you, do you, do you just put them in dry? Do you, do you put them in with anti Do you put them in with Loctite? What's the whole practice behind that? Okay, so it depends on what you're doing, and usually studs are in engines to begin with. And then when you're putting them in an engine, it gives you the minimum driving torque, so you know that it's going in tight enough. And then you're depending upon this, the tension of the bolted thing to hold it together most of the time. So, so anti-seize is a, a yay or a nay 
Um, it's a yes because I never want to. Well, you're okay if it's a steel nut going inside of a aluminum case. I put a little oil or something on there. I don't do it dry. Need to keep it golly. Yeah, exactly. Can't you soak studs in oil too, and then do your work from there? Or you... Soak the stud in oil. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. Yeah, I know it's a different Well, no, no. It's uh, the whole thing with oil and stuff. It actually makes a big deal. So, all right. So, we'll finish this up, and then I don't think I really answered your question well. But, yeah, I, it depends on the application. Well, the reason I asked is just because I found it was really hard to find the information about that. What are you trying to put a stud into? An engine. Oh, an engine? Like A65? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, when you're doing that, you actually have to use the M0 manual which most people don't know about, which talks about that, which has a whole bunch of information in it, which would actually tell you. Um, it won't call specifically, and it depends on the stud. If they're deck studs, then it does call for a specific uh, anti-seize, and anti-seize, um, thread locker, sealant. Oh gosh, okay. So, but if it's just what, like right, a- What was the book, what was the, the book that you said? M0 manual. M0? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna write that down. Continental M0 manual. And there's uh, appendix, Oh, no, I just turned to it. It's like Appendix A or something. It's got a, it's a gigantic section of torques. It's huge. Okay. And it's got all kinds of specific things. What's the difference between a bolt and a stud? A stud has no head on it. So it's just one bolt. Yep, and you have to use a special tool to drive it in, okay. and then you remove the tool. And then you're left with a part with a like bolt sticking up out of it. I wonder if I have an example in my office. Just talk amongst yourself. Cover all that. Let me see. Castellated nut, cotter pin, used on items subject to rotation. All right, let's take a break.